Hello, in this video we will be making some maintenance for this laptop. We will change the thermal paste and clean the radiator from the dust. Now we are starting to disassemble the laptop. And first we need to remove is the cover for SSD and for RAM. Removing the screws. Removing the cover. You can see the SSD and the RAM micro scheme. So we are removing the screws for SSD. And now we will remove the RAM unit as well. After RAM and SSD removed, we need to remove the battery as well and begin to unscrew the screws which are holding the cover to remove the, the upper cover from the laptop to get an access to the motherboard. So battery is removed and we are continuing disassembling the laptop. The next thing we need to do is to remove the keyboard from the laptop because there are a lot of screws under it so which are need to be removed in order to remove the upper cover from the laptop. Please, as you can see, there is a contact for the keyboard. Please be extremely careful when, when unplugging the contact, because if you damage it, the new keyboard should be purchased. You won't be able to restore it. So please be careful when removing this contact. So the keyboard is removed and now we are good to go to, can, to disassembling the node the laptop further. Removing the screw which holds the DVD drive and removing the DVD drive from the laptop. Disconnecting all the contacts for the touchpad and for the switch button to remove the upper cover. There are a lot of screws in this laptop, but uh, the advantage is that the screws have uh, the similar length, so and it is not crucial to arrange the screws in the position as they were, because even if you miss the screws, nothing will happen.
While removing the upper panel I have noticed that I have missed two screws which are hidden on the bottom part of the laptop. There are very, a lot of screws in this laptop but, I have, but as I have mentioned the majority of them has the similar length and it is not so crucial to arrange them on the positions as they were before. Now the upper cover is removed, you can see the motherboard and the cooler and a lot of dust in it. So in order to get an access to the cooling system of this laptop, we need to remove the motherboard from its place. So also where I'm plugging the contacts, please be careful, these contacts are very tiny. I was trying to remove the contact for, US, for, for the right USB connector, but uh, this uh, contact was connected very hard and I was afraid to damage it, so I decided not to disconnect this contact because it is not making any obstacles for me to get an access to the cooling system of the motherboard. As you can see the cool and you can see the cooling system of the motherboard so it contains the radiator the cooler and the metal plates so the thermal paste uh, under them is very old because this laptop is eight years old and uh, the thermal paste have been never changed before so that's the thing we're gonna do now So the screws for the radiator are different, but uh, there are not much of them. So and they have the similar length. So just we will put these screws on the other on the other part of my table, and uh, I will not mix them. So the last thing we need to do is to disconnect the cool and disconnect the cooler from the motherboard, and you can see a lot of dust and uh, old thermal paste which is left on the plates. So first thing we need to do is to remove the old thermal paste from CPU and GPU on the motherboard. So the thermal paste is removed from the CPU, and now we're removing it from the GPU. So this is done and the second thing we need to do is to clean the cooler from outside and the inside. So there is a lot of dust in the radiator because this laptop has been heating too much. So and as you can see a huge amount of dust within the cooler. It is not surprising that this laptop was heating very hard. So and now as you can see I have cleaned the radiator and removed all of dust from it. Now I suppose that there will be no issues with the heating. So also I need to remove the old thermal paste from the cooling plates of the radiator. Now assemble the cooler. And now our radiator is good to go to be installed on the back, back to the motherboard again. So now we need the new thermal paste. So I will put the thermal paste on the CPU and on the GPU. So it is not required to put the huge amount of the thermal paste. So the quantity I put is more than enough. And after the thermal paste is on the CPU and GPU, we are good to go to install the radiator.
As soon as the radiator is installed on the motherboard, we need to connect the power cable for the cooler. And now, and now we will start the assembling the laptop. from putting the motherboard on its place. Now everything is installed, now we're connecting all the contacts, doing it very carefully, as usual. Arranging the wires in the laptop's chassis, in order to avoid damaging of these wires. So, please do not forget to connect all the contacts which had been disconnected before because assembling and disassembling of the laptop is a very hard work. So make sure to connect everything properly. So as I can see everything is connected and now it is time to install the upper cover of the laptop and to screw uh, all the screws back. The upper cover is installed, so I'm again I'm connecting the touchpad contacts and the switch button contacts to the motherboard. Installing all the screws back. Also, there are a lot of screws on the back side. Also, do not forget to install them as well. Also, do not forget to connect the Wi-Fi antenna to the motherboard. Otherwise, the laptop will not accept the Wi-Fi signal. Now everything is installed, we can continue to assemble the laptop, to screwing all the screws back to their places. So it is time to install the DVD drive back to the laptop. and to install the screw which holds it on its place. And now that everything is assembled, it's time to install the SSD and the RAM unit back. So the RAM unit is installed on its place. Now we need to screw the left screws, which are not screwed yet. And after this we can install the bottom cover for SSD and for the RAM. Also do not forget to install the keyboard as well. So we will make some clean of the inner part in order to remove all the dust. Connecting the, connecting the contact to the motherboard and then install it the keyboard back to its place. So everything is good to go now. So and the last thing we need to do as I mentioned before is to install the bottom cover for SSD and RAM unit and battery. Then install the battery to its place and let's start, let's try to turn on the laptop and see whether it's ok or not. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe on the channel. See you next time, goodbye.